Thank you, Yuqing, so much for being here today with us. Could you first start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Tell us about your current position and your academic background. Yeah, sure. So my name is Yuqing. I'm currently a second year PhD student at UC Berkeley. Um, with the Berkeley AI Research Group, uh, primarily my research focus lies more in robot learning and things along that realm and how to get robots to better work with people and so on. And my undergrad background was I majored in engineering physics at UBC. Moving on, what would be a typical day at work for you as an AI researcher? As a second year PhD student, it's definitely a mix of doing my own research work and being more of a I guess traditional student, like I was an undergrad. Yeah. So depending on the day, I might have certain classes to attend. Um, and in grad school, the classes are more focused on research-based things. So sometimes they'll be more project-based or we'll be focused more on reading papers rather than uh, working through a bunch of math problems like I used to do back in undergrad. Mm -hmm. So there's a bit of a difference there. And outside of classes, I spend a lot of time either in meetings, working with other people, and we're brainstorming projects together or working on my own research projects. And when I'm doing my own, I guess, AI types of research, it's a lot more of coding things, trying to get things working, and then eventually trying to test things out on real robots in the real world and running experiments and so on. This, what are some of the projects you're currently involved in? For me, my research interests uh, really lie in trying to get robots to work in the real world. So for me, a dream would be uh, coming home and then having a robot maybe in the kitchen be able to cook something for me. Uh, but that's really hard because everyone's yeah. home is different and learning how to cook, I mean, it's already really difficult for a person, uh, right. much less for a robot to learn how to do that on its own. You want robots to really work in the real world, they have to be able to learn and adapt to different situations um, and different tasks that they have to do. And they also have to learn how to work with people and around people. And so some projects that I've worked on more on the human robot interaction side deal more with having robots learn how to better help people or assist people, whether that's a physical robot in the real world or an assistive agent that you might have on your phone or something. Mm -hmm. And one of the projects specifically that I was working on most recently was dealing with how to have these agents learn to help people by empowering them. Yeah, so next question, what stood out to you about choosing engineering physics and what made you decide on going into research? There were uh, two main things that stood out to me about EngPhys. Uh, first of which was looking just generally at what the program entailed. I thought that was really interesting because for me, in first year, I wasn't really set on doing a particular type of engineering or knowing specifically that I loved electrical engineering or anything like that. Yeah. Um, I like that EngFIS kind of gives you not just access to all of these different types of engineering, but also teaches you a lot of the fundamental maths and physics. So it allows you to be able to you know, reach out to these different areas and explore things on your own just because of how flexible the program is as a result of teaching you all of these different things. And the second thing that I was really drawn to in EngFIS more broadly was um, seeing some of the students in the program, they're all really ambitious and hardworking. And that was the type of peers or environment that I really wanted to put myself in and mm -hmm. wanted to learn from. Mm -hmm. And for me, um, deciding to go into research was kind of a roundabout journey that uh, came about after trying a bunch of different things through co-op uh, during undergrad, actually. So um, with the co-op program at UBC, I tried out a variety of different types of positions in both industry and in research. Um, and in my research work, I'm able to really try things out and work on projects that I'm personally interested in. So what I found was that with some of the industry positions, I would be working on projects that, you know, contribute to some high level goal that the company had in mind, but may not necessarily be aligned with what I was personally really curious about or wanted to explore. And so what I thought was really valuable about working in these research positions and working in this research lab now is that I'm able to explore ideas that I think would be really interesting. In academic research in particular, uh, in AI, you're able to be a at this like cutting edge and this forefront of this technology mm -hmm. that's developing. And that's something that I thought was really cool. Yeah, what you said is really similar to what our professors told us is that research really allows you to like explore like whatever areas that interest you. It gives you a lot of freedom as well. That is very cool. <laughs> <laughs> Next question, what are three habits or skills necessary for highly successful research engineers or just engineering students in general? Firstly, I think being really curious and wanting to be adventurous is really important. 
I think part of the interesting part of engineering is that you're building things and you're constantly learning new things and working with other people or working on creating some product or developing something, whatever type of engineering that you're doing. Kind of a cliche habit that's really good, I guess, for any type of position is having good time management skills, especially in undergrad, you know, you're balancing all of your different courses. And then you're also balancing trying to stay like physically healthy and mentally healthy, you know, whether that's with spending time with your family or friends or keeping time for your hobby or exercising and things like that. I think being able to balance all these different components of your life and juggling them together in a way that works best for you is really important. Final skill is really being able to communicate effectively and collaborate effectively with other people, um, whether that's other people on your specific engineering team, so the engineers, or even if you're working on a project and you have to talk to some people who are more like science-based or even people who are like in social sciences or completely outside of engineering fields specifically, I think being able to work with other people is really, really important and really valuable too. You often find that you're learning something that, you know, you might not, not have considered beforehand. So the next question is, what has been some of the most memorable events that has happened during your research journey? The one thing that really made this salient in my mind was uh, in the first year of my PhD, there's you often this like big conference that a lot of the ML researchers uh, go to. And I remember my first year, I was signing up for a lottery just to get a spot to attend the conference just because there were so many potential attendees. And then one year later, I had gotten my own work and a paper submitted to the conference and it was accepted. So a year later, I was there presenting my own work um, and talking to people about what I was working on. And it felt really surreal to think back that just one year prior, I was you know, just struggling to even get to attend the conference and listen to the things that were happening mm -hmm. there. Um, and a year later, I was presenting the stuff that I thought was really cool and the stuff that I had been working on. I guess for me, yeah, the most memorable thing would be looking back and seeing how much I've learned and how far I've come in just a fairly short period of time. And yeah. hopefully that continues for the coming years of my PhD. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is so powerful and also really rewarding as well. So the next question is, what were some of the challenges in deciding going into research? main challenge of deciding what I wanted to do for my career or deciding to go into research was is especially during undergrad not really knowing exactly what different careers entailed mm -hmm. and so I remember throughout the beginning of undergrad um, thinking that I would go into industry and work as an engineer but I knew that I was kind of interested in coding I thought it was really cool how you can just like write some software and it would work in real time on your computer really quickly um, but I was also interested in building things like the more of the mechanical engineering aspect and so a lot of these different types of engineering uh, pulled me in these different directions, which is why I spent a lot of undergrad kind of meandering around and trying different things out, whether that was through like student teams or through co-op. Mm -hmm. And so I would definitely not say that I like knew specifically the career that I wanted or that I wanted to go into research right off the bat. I would say that maybe kind of an obstacle is not really knowing you know, you talk about being a mechanical engineer, for example, but what does that really mean? And so for me, one way of working around the obstacle during undergrad was trying to find these opportunities to work in these different areas or to talk to um, different engineers who are already working in the different places and different areas and trying to get some of their advice. Awesome. So now we're moving on to talk more about your undergrad experiences. What was some of the most memorable university experience that you had? A common aspect of EdgeSports is like suffering through all these courses that we <laughs> took together, um, which I don't know, I don't know if that's a good or a bad memory to have, but I would say it's memorable. A particular event was the summer uh, robot competition course that mm -hmm. we all took. Yeah. So every year in second year uh, during the summer, all of the EdgeFist students uh, take this robot competition course where you're essentially building the robots from the ground up. So you do everything from the mechanical design to the electrical design to writing the software for controlling the robot. And so for me, that was a really memorable event because it was the first time I'd worked on such a large scale project from like the very beginning, seeing it all the way through to the end at the very day of the competition. Um, but it was also really memorable because I think it was the first time that our cohort really spent a lot of time together. I made some really close friends um, that, you know, I stayed in touch with throughout undergrad and even now. That's cool. Yeah, it's always a community. Yeah. So the next question is, if you could give one piece of advice to your younger students, what would it be? 
um, like believing in myself and finding out uh, what it is that I'm really passionate about and what it is that I'm really interested in. I think like the cool part of undergrad, as I've been saying, is you're know, trying out these different things, figuring out whether it's something that I liked or didn't like. And even now, I think that's something that's still important to keep in mind as I continue working on my research. You know, believing in myself, working on things that I think would be really cool, figuring out what it is that um, I want to work on or the questions that, that I really want to answer, what those are, um, and highlighting that for myself. That's awesome. So moving on to our conclusion, what is your favorite part about being a research engineer? I would say that my favorite part is being able to build things and see things working, you know, in real life. You know, when you're putting together the code and you're putting together whatever robot it is that I might be working on, and uh, when everything actually comes together and seeing it working in real life, I think that's really rewarding. Um, and thinking about the potential impacts that the work that you have might have on other people. I think that's really, really cool. Yeah, for sure. Those are really great answers. Oh, thank you so much for being here.